This is Craig Haugard with your Financial Issues Ag Update. Well, the markets were closed yesterday in observance of President's Day, but reopened last night with the night session kicking off at 7 p.m. Central Time. Traders are optimistic this morning, and we have the grains off to a good start in that overnight trade. On Friday, however, we saw corn finish lower as Chinese corn purchases failed to materialize. Looking at the longer-term picture, we had the USDA's 10-year projections out, and they were far from bullish for corn. The USDA used the 94.5 million planted acre number for the 2021 season and a national average yield of 178.5 bushels per acre, which in turn generated a 2.75 billion bushel carryout. Other items of note was the USDA's dire forecast for ethanol usage over the next 10 years. While the USDA is forecasting feed consumption of corn to grow by a billion bushels over the next 10 years, the USDA raised ethanol usage by only 325 million bushels. As part of its long-term view, the USDA is of the belief that, barring a weather issue such as a flood or a drought, carryouts in the U.S. are going to float right around that 2 point billion bushel area consistently. And if that's the case, we may be mired in a low-price environment for the foreseeable future. As I record this, the overnight spot corn futures are responding pretty nice coming off of a three-day weekend and trading three cents higher. Soybeans closed 11 cents higher last week, but Friday's news was dominated by rumors of the anticipated Chinese buying that did not materialize. Now, from an export perspective, right now, Brazilian soybean values are running $5 to $10 per metric ton cheaper delivering in China than our U.S. values. With the signing of the Phase 1 agreement, agro-consultants forecast that Brazil may lose 7 to 15 percent of their soybean shipments to China compared to last year. Well, Robobank uh, pushes that loss at 15%. Agroconsultants uh, also is forecasting a soybean crop that's going to be 2 million metric tons larger than it was estimated to be just last month. At 126.3 million metric tons, it'd be the largest official estimate floating around in the market so far. It certainly appears that Brazil is going to have another record crop, uh, so it's going to be pretty interesting competition to see who gets that Chinese business. In the overnight trade, we have spot soybean futures trading $0.04 higher. Chicago wheat closed $0.16 lower for the week last week. We saw Russian FOB values fall $2 per metric ton on Friday, which just makes it tough for the U.S. to compete in that world export market. The USDA's long-term tables show an almost eternal projection of stagnant domestic use and exports for the U.S. through the end of the 10-year period, with basically a 900 million bushel carryout uh, dominating that forecast. The USDA seems to be relegating the U.S. to the position of residual supplier uh, for the world, and none of that would argue for a major bull market anytime soon. Having said that, we've captured almost all of last week's loss in the overnight trade, with Chicago trading 12 cents higher as we record this. Kansas City is up a dime, and Minneapolis is trading 9 cents higher. Livestock futures uh, were closed yesterday, so really nothing to report there. We do have milk futures trading in the overnight uh, with spot futures trading three points lower. It is interesting looking at the milk futures that in March 2020 futures on Friday uh, were down 11 points to settle at 1701. One year ago, those March 2019 futures settled at 1456. This has been Craig Haugard with your Financial Issues Ag Update. We'll be right back with more financial issues after this. <music>